Shalom, la bachayarim, shalom, yashallah. Peace be to the elect of the nation of Israel. Consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Starting with, of course, the 144,000, Ha-Ra'ash, the heads, the Nabayayim, the prophets, which are the leaders of the nation, which shall prophesy to, of course, the rest of the nation, the rest of the one-third, being other men, women, and children, which will believe in the words which the Lord shall speak through the prophets, and received at the Wath, which is that mark of exemption from the coming judgment. And of course, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Chakodash, Kah Halayim La, Allah Hayinu Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Chakodash, which I said, all praises to Ever Power Yahweh, which is the name of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. His name is Yahweh Shai. Hashem, meaning in the name, Racha, meaning Spirit, Kodash is holy. And of course, Shalom, Wa Chesad, Wa Barakim, La Bachayarium. As I said, peace. And uh, I said, Shalom, Wa, I gave you, of course, blessings. And I forgot what else I actually said. It's like, I kind of lost my train of thought. But peace. Mercy, chesed is mercy actually, and you have Barakim is uh, blessings to the election. Yeah, the nation of Israel consists of so-called Negro Latinos, Native Americans, is like foreigners that have been scattered through the rest of the four winds, whom are Israelites by the lineage of their fathers, which is all revealed through the Rechah Kodash, the Holy Spirit, Ma'amatha, truth. Shema Ma'amatha, my name is Ma'amatha, from the Great Mills, don't play tables camp, okay, to here, and I said, you're Philadelphia, coming again with another, my Lamadium, my right, little lesson, all right, and, uh, of course, the blind cells, and possibly the Great Mills, so if I didn't say that already, yeah, so you have here, the, the current, Video which I'm going to bring out is Food Crisis of 2020 The Great American Potato Famine of 2020 And Beyond So this actually came About with me Because there, this entire year being 2019 the year Kragma Which Kragma chip or if I need micro chip, Which is the mark of the beast Which will be made mandatory very soon I've been seeing um, When I do my wee Shopping like when I my call you or to buy my fid which I said in the Hebrew there's been a lack of potatoes and I'm talking about the organic potatoes that is because we know that potatoes and just in the regular conventional potatoes they are heavy laden with much um, pesticide residue upon them um, but they're, uh, you know, a great source of a lot of potassium and, you know, starch that can uh, give you a lot of good uh, benefits of energy and such. You know, whether they're sweet or whether they're the white potato, Russell potatoes, all right, Irish potatoes, <laughs> red potatoes. So, um, you know. I've been seeing it, no, no potatoes like like that, you know, being readily available in the organic section of the place I shop at, which is um, it's called Giant Supermarkets here, uh, here in Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, in which when I do day or do see the potatoes, most of them potatoes are. Baby potatoes, golden baby potatoes, you know, fed it for the most part. And when I even go to say like a Aldi, which is similar to your little, well, they got little stores over there in UK too, but yeah. Um, you go to like Aldi, it's been the same, you know, a lot Aldi you can get a lot of things for a discount and such, yeah, significant price, cheaper prices and such, but. It doesn't, uh, 
negate the fact that there's definitely a scarcity of the potatoes. And I noted that there, this whole year. I've been saying it to the Akim, so um, I got this uh, video, which it goes into it a wee bit. Okay, let's just get into it. And I got a couple um, articles too, which he actually brought out in this um, video, which uh, probably is eating right here. <laughs> the note is so sick, we'll go into it. Well, hello there, y'all. You might want to know why we're over at Soup Foods again today. Well, it's Sunday. And we came across some disturbing news about potatoes. So we're over here at Soup Foods checking prices. So let's see what they got here. As you can see here, they got here some potatoes, eight pounds, two bags for six fifty. That ain't bad. And these potatoes are from. Well, these are some Russell potatoes, from Minnesota, Wingard Farms. We went ahead and threw two bags of them in there. But over here, we got a five pound bag of red potatoes, three, four to four. Got some of these here butter golds. 282 for five pounds. And then of course down here we got baby red potatoes, 241 for three pounds. That's pretty high for my blood. Well, we got some more rusts over here. And these are from Dole. As you can see, pineapple people. Not sure what they got about potatoes. <laughs> There's a two for four. But it's only four pounds. And then Idaho's, which is what I normally try to buy is a five pound bag for 244. So, looks like our best deal is the eight pound bag, for three and a quarter, or two for 650. So, y'all, that's why we're over here today. We're checking potato prices. And uh, later on in this video, once I get done with the rest of my shopping, I'll be showing you just why. Because it's not the best of news. So y'all stay tuned. Okay? So y'all, here we are. Back at the old computer screen tonight. And this was uh, an article. It's from a site I follow. It's called The Packer. And it uh, mainly deals with uh, processing of different vegetables and fruits. But they had an interesting article that came out here on October 23rd and we'll just start with the headline here updated mother nature deals setbacks to Idaho North Dakota potatoes now if you're not familiar with what states produce the most potatoes in America number one of course is Idaho number two is Washington State and North Dakota's in the top uh, 13 to 15 states as well. And they got a little graph here to start the article off. And these are Idaho potatoes on the rise, question mark. 50 pound cartons, September through October. And you can see they went up coming out of September. Of course, that's the end of crop last year. They were up uh, as high as uh, $19 a cart. And they fell on off to uh, about $11 a cart, but now they're back on up to $16. Now here again, they got update October 24th. Weather in Idaho and the Red River Valley in North Dakota and, and Minnesota will affect how many table stock potatoes those regions have this season. Now, 
just so you know, table stock potatoes are the fresh potatoes that I just bought in those bags from Superfoods. That's all they mean by that, table stock potatoes. Uh, that's not processed potatoes. That's not the potatoes that are going to be canned. You see in the cans in the grocery stores, french fries, other frozen potatoes, or dehydrated potatoes. And really, the biggest news going on is the weather and Mother Nature. It has changed our outlook this year, said Joe Esta, Vice President. No, I just want to make this quick note. Um, so isn't it isn't it any Mother Nature or nothing like that? You know that is Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. That of course is visiting the world in which he have made and bringing down Mashapatyam, and where the farmers them are now yielding good crops or good har good harvests. So. This is going to lead to a famine in which I'm going to bring out this precept real quick in which reads in the book of 2nd Edges, the 15th chapter in the verse 13. And it reads here. Alright, I'm going to start actually in um, verse 12. And it says here, Egypt, Matazarium, which is America. America is known as Saltman, Egypt, as we know through the scriptures. This is a place where the Israelites, so-called Negro Latinos and the Americans, have went into slavery and are here under the Edomites. Being in captivity and our oppressors will not let us go. Meaning that until Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, well, Yahweh, dear son Yahushai, deliver us, or Yahushai, Nawa, deliver us, being the elect, Habachayarium, Mayan, Baba, from Babylon. And the foundation of it shall be smitten. So Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten. With the plague and punishment that the power shall bring upon it. And that's going to be ultimately that plague being the nuclear missile. That is those flying arrows, the glitter and swords, the iron weapon is going to break this piece, this place into pieces. It's going to broke and it's going to get uh, tattered. Yeah. It's going to be uh, completely abbreviated being Babylon, okay? It's going to be a desert, actually. And um, you have other places on the earth is going to get hit with missiles, too. You know, some places in are going to be um, utterly destroyed. Some places may, are, are actually, some places are not going to even be touched, all right, by the missiles. But we know that the land of Israel is going to get a cleansing and definitely America. All right, which you have different nations such as Russia, China, North Korea, India. I mean, they have nuclear weapons. All right, so that's going to happen through World War Three. Reading on, it says here, verse thirteen, the point. It says, "They that till the ground, who who are they that till the ground? That's the farmers. Them shall mourn for their seeds." Shall fail through the blasting and hail, and with a fearful consolation, in which the point being that their seeds shall fail, you know, that which they plant, okay, is going to fail. In which what is being um, planted is failing due to the different forms of. Storms are sa'ar, I believe that is in Hebrew. Sa'ar, so sa'ar, sa sa I believe in Hebrew, which is storm or tempest, which he's bringing upon Aratazah, especially Babal. Well, we're speaking about Babal, Egypt. 
which he had noted here. I believe I got this in Potato Grower, which it reads here. One of the this is a in the grower struggles to complete harvest. It says one of the largest potato farmers in Grand Forks or Folk Forks, County, North Dakota, is in a race against time to harvest his crop. Hoberson Farms had about 17 inches of rain. Alright, so this is going in a different weather. Alright, a lot of different rain. This is the blast in the hill and such. Okay. I am another 20 inches of snow since September the 1st. And after waiting on muddy, flooded fields, or Shada, which is fields. To dry, call Hooverson need it needs to get his potato potatoes. Potato said out of the ground before the temperatures drop too low, because the ground is going to be hard. So you had not only seventeen inches of rain, but also twenty inches of snow, in which that leaves which is going to explain itself. The ground and in an unfavorable position. It says Hoverson said this year's crop is one of the best crops they had ever had ever, but a couple of thousand acres worth of potatoes are still sitting in the mud. The bad thing is, is that once they get cold, they won't fray well. Which you know, many people use these toys for their French fries here or. You know, chips, <laughs> you know, yeah, chips as french fries, yeah, they always say that in the UK, they uh, swallowing and such, yeah. but, um, and even a lot of different, um, companies using for, uh, crisps, or their fries, and, or, uh, like, potato chips and stuff, no, so going on, it says here, that, Once they are getting frost damage, they then it's probably going to be too late. His crew has been slowly making progress, but their equipment often gets stuck. Yeah, because it's muddy, wet, damp, or right, unfavorable situations. The farm is usually done with the potato harvest by October the first. Right, and this was actually published on the the, tw the 24th of, of 2019. Alright, so, you know, they're well behind, but the year, but this year the ground was too wet for the crew to get into the, to the fields, into the Shaddai, and it's been a constantly raining, Hooverson said, every three or four days it rains and we're shut down, the farms has even paid its seasonal workers to stay to help with the harvest and this fall they have seen it has been the worst it has see, they, they've seen in decades all right so this is because you have a shimmy shy is bringing forth the prophecies which he has written in the scriptures because my remember his word doesn't it go out Here, this is the precept. Um, let's see, Saki, give me a wee moment as I retrieve it. I believe it's in Isaiah. It says here, Isaiah 55 and 11. Actually, I'm going to start up a bit. Alright, so... It says in um, Isaiah chapter 55 or your book of Hashaparsh Yeshaya or the book of Isaiah Yeshaya meaning my salvation chapter 55 and 10 for as rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither but watereth the earth and maketh it to forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower 
right? Who sold the farmers and such. And bread to the eater. Lacham to the eater. Those who eat. So you have it though that is happening. But the Lord, he's bringing it where he's actually bringing a curse to the, the land. To Babal, to Aratiza. So shall my word be that goeth forth out my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, in which the Lord sent the different storms to actually curse the land and where that which is sown may no give good seed, all right? Or really this, the, what is being grown is being spoiled because the unfavorable situations of the land being that it's too moist. So, going into it, back in to the article, it says here that It'll be the first year, probably since 1983, that we wouldn't if wouldn't finish. Hooverson said, "I was hoping we'd finish, but it doesn't look like we will." All right, so you have it where they didn't even getting finished with getting that harvest. Right? It rooted out, up out the ground. You know, that's how much difficulty they're having. And I must know, as it said, that the potato farm is, is for a harvest is usually done by October the first, right? So it says here that Hooverson said about sixty percent of the potato or potatoes <laughs> or potatoes have been harvested, and they will be lucky if they make it to seventy five percent. Whoever the farmer knows, he's not alone. All right. Uh, no alone in the fight. Or in La A La Bad Baha Machama. Alright, which is uh, said not alone in the fight in Hebrew. It says this year it's been tough for everybody. It's going to affect the whole region. Whoever is not going to be just one farmer. It's amazing that there's are good enough people to hang in there, Hooverson said. And you have it where a lot of the different farmers are actually killing themselves due to them being in debt and obviously the fearful cancellation. Okay, this weather, which they didn't see any hope because of the different weather impacts, which have destroyed. Most of their crops and such, all right. Which that's their whole life. You you being a farmer, all right. To to of course feed the masses here. Okay, so this precept, which says about the day that till the ground shall mourn, okay. For their seeds shall fail through the blasting in hail. And with a fearful consolation, right? That fulfills it. And it's uh, amazing to see this happen because it's going to bring forth a famine. Okay, let's go a bit more into this. Was the potato uh, packer, which is the article which he had brought it. And it said that cold weather in Idaho and heavy rains in the wet Red River or Valley prevented harvest in some regions. The extent of the crop loss in Idaho is unknown, but Esther said it could be a significant. It was a significant. It says fields or Hashada won't be harvested, while others will be harvested because of insurance requirements, but may not have the right quality for the fresh market. In which, in that case, they put them and process them, process them into the different can 
totties and such, which I, I never eat them before. They dings. <laughs> it says the extent of the crop loss. Of, uh, let me see. Saki, we go there, and it says I would guess damage is probably in the twenty percent range. Some northern Idaho farmers got affected a lot worse. Is a lot colder or quar weather, while some of the guys in the southern areas have most of their crops in. Said he said he says a snowstorm and cold weather in late September and early October hit northern Idaho growing regions. We can handle cold or quar for a couple of days. But after that, it got cold in the single digits in some areas. Moisture in the fields in the Shada didn't allow potatoes or potatoes to warm up. He said, in addition, the earlier frost in June knocked yields down for some growers. So, I mean, you can see that. They've been getting hit with multiple damage, okay, due to the warm. I mean, due to the, the actual uh, inclement weather and such. It, or, you know, these different weather patterns that are different. It's the Lord that's doing these things. It says all of those factors are going to make for an interesting market. And then North Dakota lost some of their crop, he said. An yeah, interesting market is going to be higher prices on the top is that potatoes that are out and it's gonna be uh, a scarcity of them okay it says and they're gonna have to I mean you only have it where totties only last but so far long so long and such okay and they're already damaged for the most part so it says industry reports indicate Idaho is probably roughly 15% more of the potato crop still in the ground when the hard freeze nights started on October the 9th Mark Klumpian, president or CEO of Potato Growers in America, said in an email, Most of those potatoes were destined for a fresh sector, but some of their, some were targeted for processor use, which I know it. It says of the re those remaining with a high likelihood of potential damage, we've heard anywhere from 10% to high 40% as much as 40% of frost damage. It says North Dakota crop la lagging. The USDA's crop progress report for Minnesota reported that 20, October 21, yeah, October 21st, this, that 64% of totties were harvested on that date. So you had it where <laughs> real late, this is October 21st. You, you know, this, what, a bit, what? Uh, at least 20 days after it usually the, the season usually stops and it says w well behind 89 percent harvest it at the same time of year okay so you see it usually heavy rains and snow has slowed harvest said jeff lazar sales representative of the associated batatis or tato growers inc incorporated in grand forks new new north dakota Growers for the company only had about a third of their crop harvested as October 24th. That's only about a third. So, shoot. Compared to the 90% on similar dates, you know, so they're back, okay? Because things are being left in the field, okay? Due to them, as I had brought it, you know, the different um, difficulties. With cold weather moving in soon growers could be hard pressed to finish so you have it where you know you'll try to go and get the rest of the harvest to complete it but you may be able to because <laughs> more weather comes okay it says from the first part of september into in late october between eight and 16 inches of rain fell in addition to anywhere of 10 to 25 inches of snow. He perhaps said, he said perhaps 50 to 60 percent of totties or potatoes fields around Grand Forks was are still at like, risk, and the markets are definitely being pushed. He says that the Northern Plains potato growers 
which represent the North Dakota Minnesota growers, said that only 40 percent or 50, 45 to 50 percent of potatoes have been harvested in the immediate Red River Re Valley region, with fresh and seed growers hit particularly hard. North Dakota weather has had an equal, if not larger, impact on the potato crop, Compton said. Many of the fields in the so south grind of Forks will not be harvested. It's a little bit better situation in the north of Grand Forks, but it's still serious as North Dakota is probably 70% of the harvested. So then it speaks about the market spike. This is going to be the, the prices. Okay, so... No, they did actually, you know, the guy actually noted these different things. All right, USDA report October 22, the price of 50 pound cartons of Red River Valley size B round potatoes was 23 to 25.50 up to, or up from 14 through 16.50 per carton around the same year ago. So... You can see the difference, all right? And that's going to um is actually going to impact you as the consumer because they different um supermarkets and such they'll buy it, but they gotta obviously uh, make a profit, okay? So the stuff is going to go up. It's going to be a lot of confusion still out there because many people are nice. Don't it doesn't even care about what's going on. At this time, and then they, they of course, uh, regarding the times and counting the times which we're in, all right, it tells you about uh, this. I believe it's in the maybe in the actual next chapter. We'll get it. Uh, second edge is chapter 16, and I'm gonna start at verse 19. Are actually 18. It says the big. It says it says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, and the beginning of famine and great death, the beginnings of wars, and the powers shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils, which is bad times. What shall I do when these evils shall come? And that's Ezra speaking, a prophet of Yahweh Shem Yahushai, Yahweh and His only begotten Son. Behold, Hanah. Famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment, all right, corrections. But for all these things, they shall not turn or not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of their scourges. And people still going to do their different sins. Chatayim, uh, which is sin in Hebrew. Uh, still going to not um, regard that there's a power, nay, regard that this place is due, or the mom. Just finish. They're going to just keep being that same nigga they've been if they <laughs> since. Or that same wicked Puerto Rican, or same wicked devil they've been. Okay. A wicked heathen. <laughs> so anyway, going further, it says here, Behold, victuals, your provisions and such, if it shall be so good cheap upon earth, that they shall think themselves, themselves to be in a good case, and even then shall evils bad times grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the others that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. Esau is going to destroy you wicked Israelites out there, the two thirds. And you heathen, y'all going to get slaughtered out there from obviously being in the midst of this. And the elect is going to actually be taken care of. The, the chosen of the nation of Israel, the one third. Start with the prophets, Hanabiyah, and the 144, they're going to be fine, right? Uh, as it's written, our, my servants shall eat, and ye shall be hungry. 
Service shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Roughly paraphrasing. All right, so we bring out this other scripture, and that's basically I'm gonna close out. It's the Book of Lamentations, chapter four and nine. It says, "They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger." All right, which when you am are hungry and are in hunger, that is in a famished <laughs> state of being. Your body is going to literally eat itself alive. Where <laughs> your body is going to be seeking nutrients and it's just going to go all over your body. You're going to hallucinate. You're going to go bonkers. You're going to go mental because you may have this fits which you usually could get. Okay? And it's actually better to be killed with a crab or a sword than to. Actually starve to death because it's a slow death, right? It's a very painful death being hungry and your mind going up against itself and such Okay, because you're looking for food Okay, you gonna be like a zombie like a walking walking dead All right, so it says here I am Again um it says, they that be slain with the sword are better than they that be... Uh, that, but they... Slack, let me read it again. They that be slain with a sword are better than they that be slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. And that's what the people are going to want. The farmers are going to want. They're going to want the fruits of the field. But then they're going to come at all. Because the Lord has plagued the earth. Plagued Babylon. Plagued... The different places with the curse of Ne and um, yeah, growing up the right in the right uh, climate or the right actual um, really conditions. Okay, where when it's harvest time, you know you know, can get to that harvest. Okay, you're gonna get different things, uh, different types of also pestilences, diseases going to happen. Yeah, things are happening, you know. So, with that, I just want to, uh, you know, give all praise, honor, glory to y'all. Bless you, Shabbat Shalom, Rachel Kodesh, and double honor to that was about that great millstone. Who well speck, of course, of famine, you know, and a fit, you know, tauties, your meats and such. Yeah, twenty twenty looking definitely like a very, very evil time which we're in. Beginning times of Jacob trouble. With that, I'm going to say Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel.